Hello everybody, I'm Zlata Brouwer and you're watching Vine Lounge TV. I've got a special guest here, Jordan Hayes, the president of Cradle. And Cradle is the company that makes these wonderful chin rests for violin. And the special thing about this is that you can adjust them in various ways. Uh, welcome, Jordan. Hi, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, can you share a little bit what's important about having a chin rest that you can adjust? Well, uh, the most fundamental level, I think, uh, really that um, we're organic. Uh, we change our entire life. So the idea of a chin rest that will, one chin rest that will work for the rest of your life is sort of antithetical to sort of fundamental human nature. And also that, I mean, you, your playing is constantly evolving as well as your body. So uh, a large proportion of the, um, the arrangement of the violin with the bow, you have to be able to move the violin uh, in uh, subtle ways as your playing changes. And if you don't have a chin rest that can accommodate that continual exploration, then um, you're sort of uh, limited uh, and then you, you, you often, I mean, it seems like a lot of people spend quite a bit of time trying out different options their whole life. Yeah. Um, maybe you're lucky and you find something and it just sort of seems to work, but um, that hasn't been my experience. So um, the idea of having a continually adjustable chin rest that you can move as you need uh, seems to be uh, a good idea and something that I, I still adjust it probably every couple months. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it must be flexible while you're, you're playing. So there's not one solution that you have in the beginning of your violin life. And then it's just, it's perfect for the rest of your life. Uh, right. But I think also that, um, normal chin rests are, um, uh, standard shapes and we all have different bodies. So yeah, just to not have that standard shape, um, is already a big win perhaps. Yeah, yeah, and it should be clear too that the the, the cradle, uh, it, the idea is that you lock it down once you find the position that you like. There are some people I've heard that that do leave it somewhat uh, loose, particularly the bottom clamp, so that it can kind of rotate um, while they play. I mean, it's an interesting idea. I don't know that there's been a chin rest that's allowed that kind of exploration before, so that's kind of cool. But um, I lock it down and then play with it for a while, then I go, ah, I feel like I need to move the violin here a little bit. And so I do that. And yeah. 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 Um, what, what we're going to do is that I'm going to be the guinea pig and that I'm going to adjust uh, Cradle right here uh, for everybody to see how it works, uh, how you can adjust it and what the possibilities are. Um, before we start doing that, perhaps it's also interesting to share a little disclaimer of some sort that people are sometimes uh, spending so much time and effort in searching for different materials, whether it's strings or chin rests or shoulder rests, while they don't give attention uh, to actually how they play and if they play in a way that they uh, can relax. And what I liked about your site is that there's also a, I think, 12 page or something um, manual on not only how to adjust your chin rest, but also how to play uh, comfortably yeah well I think that uh, typically when when I help pe fit people with the cradle we have to start with a more holistic picture and sort of uh, zoom down because um, I think for instance uh, a good example is like a lot of people try to get their bow straight by looking in the mirror and then they 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 move their bow arm around. They monkey around with the right side of the body because it sort of makes intuitive sense that if the bow is not straight, then it's something to do with the with the with the bow arm. But the thing is, is that you can also have the option of moving the instrument to get the bow straight. So if we instead say, okay, well, we want this motion in the bow arm, we want this arrangement of of body parts in the bow arm throughout the bow stroke, then you sort of are, then you can move the violin to match. To meet the bow accordingly, and so a lot of like um, tendonitis or something caused by this droopy elbow that we see a lot of, uh, and the unhealthy positions this this tends to be, um, 
This is usually a compensatory sort of position because the uh, violin is misplaced in relation to the body. So it's a way of shortening the bow arm. Um, and so it's a way of sort of, it's again, it's, it's along the same thinking of, uh, oh, my bow's not showing, so I have to move my, my bow arm. Or you could move the violin so that you can have a neutral wrist and you can fit your bow arm in the space that it has because maybe you have a longer bow arm and you move the violin so that it, it allows you to have a natural bow arm motion and a healthy one, yeah? So um, we typically start with, with um, setting up the body how we want and then finding that bow arm, like the, the bow path, the path that the bow travels in mm -hmm. naturally, and then we move the violin to that position. Okay, yeah. So, and then the chin rest is, 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 is the cradle is just a, uh, helping us keep the violin in that position because you can adjust it in any manner. Instead of, original, like most chin rests, uh, an ordinary chin rest, it kind of wants to put you, wants to put the violin in a particular position, and yep. then we have to adjust around it. So it's sort of a, it's a, it's a different direction of moving, and it's one that's uncommon. So it takes a bit of, of uh, sort of flipping your frame of mind in order to, to, start really yeah yeah because uh, for example a uh, chin rest that is to the left like this one uh puts your uh vinyl hold in a totally different way than a center chin rest yes well yeah. a cradle you can move in any direction so actually what if i'm the guinea pig what people should do is first look at um how they're going straight or bowing comfortably or something with mm -hmm. with freedom of movement and it can be a little bit like this and like this I see a lot of people holding their violin too much to the left and uh, up. Uh, and then you have to do this with your bow arm. And I don't know if that's caused by, by a chin rest. Um, shall we start with trying to adjust this uh, cradle to uh, the way I play? Yeah, we can yeah? try that. Um, so I'm going to remove the, the chin rest. And then the cradle comes with... Um, with different, yeah, how do I call it? Different feet or something? Posts, that, we call them posts. Posts, okay. Yeah. That uh, actually connects the fixed part of the chin rest to the flexible part, I think. Yes, yes. Um, and, oh, oh, well, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can you can move both uh, things, I think. Uh, let's, let's put it on, then um, I can show a bit better how it's, uh, how it's done. And you have a centered, um, Chin rest as well as a left sided. Yes. How would people decide between the between the two? Uh, well, the the um, the advantage of the side mount, like I have on my violin, is that you can move it along the edge of the instrument, which so it sort of adds one more layer of adjustability. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes, uh, like uh, with the center mount, you're you're limited to the the bases in the center. And then you can rotate the post because the post has an angle in it. You can rotate the post and move the chin plate to the left, but there's a limit to that. And also yeah. sometimes you need the chin plate to go to go outboard and to the left or outboard and, and this way. And yeah. you can't do both necessarily with the center mount. So okay. but then there are some people who are not uh, like they want to use a center mount because I uh, violin repairman said that like they're better for the instrument or something yeah. like that and is that so. true or not really i think that it makes some sense i think that if you're careful you can yeah you can use it i mean i've talked to people with uh shall i say very 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 nice violins who use side mount and it's okay. fine yeah and others who in, insist on using center mount so okay yeah yeah just uh, depends and also yeah people shouldn't really tighten it too much otherwise right. you right. can uh, damage the instrument but that that's true for center mounted as well as left uh, mounted i think okay um we're going to adjust the cradle now um and there are uh, three uh, uh three places where you can uh loosen the the screws actually or um and the first one is perhaps on the on the base and here you can also attach the the chin rest actually mm -hmm. uh, i've now uh, got the post that is not the lowest but the second one 
Um, do you have a tip on w which one to start with? I don't have a really long neck. Right. Uh, well, <coughs> uh, you want to get your, your body set up first. So that's where we always start. But mm -hmm. um, after you've done that, if you put the instrument up, um, what I found lately is that the more straight on we keep our, uh, our more in alignment we keep, uh, you know, our, our face facing mm -hmm. forward, basically, it seems to be better. I mean, there, there's some um, schools of thinking that you can turn and nod from between the ears because that's where the nod actually happens mm -hmm. is um, uh, the cervical, the first cervical uh, vertebrae is the atlas, and that's the one that you nod on top of. The one below it is the axis, and that's the one that rotates. Yeah. So we don't want to do a compound. We don't want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we want to do rotate and nod from between the ears. Okay. Um, so you can do that. I've lately been finding the more straight on you can keep it, the better. Okay. And so what I would say is you want the instrument resting on the collarbone. So typically we do this without a shoulder rest. We fit mm -hmm. the height without a shoulder rest on. Mm -hmm. Just so that it's not it's not coloring mm -hmm. our yep. our um, perception, and then you yep. want the instrument resting on the collarbone, and then just a, a gentle nod from between the ears, and it's a little bit of a tucking chin nod. Yeah. Ideally, so that the back of the neck remains elongated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to do this. Then it's uh, then you have a pose that is too high. I think. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, whatever works for you there, but okay, yeah, yeah. This seems like I just have to do a little bit of a knot, and that's that's about mm -hmm. it. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. So that that could be something. That's one of the first things uh, a person would want to try and figure out before fitting the cradle. And then um, you can put the shoulder rest back on later, but mm -hmm. um, I would say for the initial setup, try and take the shoulder rest off so that. Because we want to establish a good connection from collarbone to jaw through the instrument and chin rest first. Yeah. And imagine that this is our primary point of contact with the instrument, mm -hmm. with the shoulder rest being secondary. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's perhaps something new for people because people adjust their shoulder rests um, a lot of times and sometimes they make them really, really high. Um, yes. Can you yeah, explain well, there's... a bit why you should rather look for uh, uh, making your chin rest higher than your shoulder rest? Yeah, it's partly, um, well, the collarbone, first of all, is much more in the center of the body. It's closer to the center of the body. It's less mobile. It is attached to the shoulder out here, so the shoulder still, shoulder movement still affects the collarbone, but it does so less. It's kind of like a shelf, and um, it's really the lowest accepted place uh, that we that we have access to in modern violin playing. Like, we don't play, you know, like this anymore, right? So, yeah. Um, but it's it's adv advantageous to have the instrument as low on the body as possible so that the bow arm doesn't have to be way up here. Yeah. You know, you see people like looking at their teachers playing on the G-string through the arm and you don't want to see that. Yeah. So you want the instrument as low on the body as possible. It means that it's closer to the body and the body has to do less work. Um, so raising, I mean, I think one of the, it's, it's understandable and I used to do this too before the cradle. Um, you, Chin rests, or the available ordinary chin rests out there, um, are typically kind of lower. They don't they don't yeah. match even an average person's neck. Typically, yeah. Yeah. you have to be kind of like a shorter person to really have uh, much use for the ordinary options. Um, and so, because of the limitation in the market, uh, everybody uses shoulder rests to lift the instrument up to the chin up to the jaw because that's the only option and shoulder rests so far have been much more uh, adjustable than yeah. chin rests yeah. but now that we have the uh, we can go the other direction you definitely want the the instrument resting directly on the collarbone that's like a constant at least mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned and then fill in whatever gap there is between the instrument and the jaw with the chin rest and okay. then you can modify the shoulder rest according to the, that um, standard that 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 uh, setup yeah and then your shoulder rest just stabilizes the instrument uh, for playing yeah. not really right. giving height not having that purpose so right. to say and okay. what i would i would recommend people try you can just um just to try it out you don't even need a special chin rest just 
take the shoulder rest off, find some foam or like some, you don't want something super um, compressible because yeah. it'll be destabilizing. Mm -hmm. But if you can find some, like a leather glove or something that has a little bit of structure to it, and you put it on top of your chin rest, build it up to the point where you can comfortably have the instrument directly on the collarbone and this space filled in, you'll notice that the, the sensation of fullness that you get right here yeah. is much more mm, cohesive or it's, it's a fuller feeling because okay. you have a straight line connection from jaw to yeah. collarbone. Whereas if you're going jaw, chin rest, instrument, zigzagging over to here and then going down into the shoulder you're going z -z -z -z, right so yeah. there's no way that transfer of uh of weight is ever going to feel as secure mm -hmm. as the direct uh, transfer the only reason that it does feel secure is typically because you can you squeeze up into the shoulder rest yeah yeah and that's what people do and that's yeah. obviously causes all kinds of problems so yeah because there yeah. are a lot of violin players who have problems with this and uh, somewhere I heard a statistic that 60% are playing with pain or something or... or yeah, I've heard as high as 80% of violinists or upper string players will struggle with playing related injury and pain at some point in their career. Wow, yeah, yeah, that's a lot, yeah. Yes. Okay, so um, if, if I could say that this height is okay for me, uh, what would be the next step to adjust it? Um, can I tighten uh, the lower screw or would you recommend doing well something? the next one that I would do is lateral motion and this is a uh, this is kind of hard to visualize but um, let me see if I can show you mm -hmm. um, <coughs> well so hopefully you can see that the post kind of comes up and then it goes over and then mm -hmm. up to the ball okay yeah so that means that if you rotate the post in this base clamp, you move mm -hmm. it like this, yeah? Then it moves the chin plate like this. Yeah, yeah. And so what we're adjusting here is the relationship between the jaw and the collarbone. Because some people have a really deep jaw, say, and so they need the chin rest likely moved away from their neck. Mm -hmm. And some people move it, need it moved closer to the neck. And so we're adjusting this motion. It also adjusts at the same time the the side to side adjustment of the chin rest. So it can take a little bit of fiddling. Mm -hmm. But what we're looking for is the instrument on the collarbone, the the instrument directly against the neck, and then when we nod, to have the 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 chin plate of the cradle just right underneath our jawline. Yeah. Now, the, to adjust the lateral motion, it takes it's it's a little bit tricky in some sense because you have to loosen this, rotate, tighten, loosen these two, and then you can uh, get this the chin plate in the correct rotation and tilt mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it, it kind of has to happen while you're doing other things, but it's a good uh -huh. second thing to kind of start thinking about is like, oh, okay. do I need the chin? Is the chin plate? In other words, if it's too far this way. Mm -hmm. It will push the instrument away from you. Okay. If yeah. it's if it's too far that way, then you'll be reaching for it. So yeah. you want to find that that place where it's right underneath your jaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have to turn it a little bit that way. Um, yeah. So if I really put the instrument uh, very close to my neck, and then I shouldn't have to be reaching for it. So. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to have to reach. Right then this seems good, yeah. That seems pretty good, yeah. And then I would just uh, maybe say, uh, scroll up a little bit, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if that feels good, then you could start, uh, then you can lock down this Okay, clamp. yeah. Alrighty, I've locked down the lower, um, yes. yeah, okay. And then basically the next part is just kind of, uh, you can just slightly move this around so that yeah. it feels best on your jaw. Yeah, I'll just show it a little bit in the other camera that people see how you can move it around. Yeah, yeah. Because this, um, let's see if it's... It's just yeah. a ball socket, so you can, you know, obviously do everything. Like yeah. You can yeah. move it in every direction. Yeah. Okay. And then you can lock these two. Done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once you're, once you're good. Yeah, and of course people need different rounds with this because we're. I'm just doing this to 
show um, how it works in general, but um, I think you would kind of play and then adjust and play and adjust yes. yeah, until yeah. until you find really what you uh, what you're looking right. for. Yeah. Yeah. So it allows uh, to remain in, in good alignment with the body and put the instrument where it needs to be so that it works with the bow arm. So it's a sort of a, it takes some time sometimes to figure that out. But yep. that's why I say you, you, it's good to spend some time asking yourself if you could have everything you want, what body position would I want? And you, you, you visualize that, kind of get that squared away. Yep. Then you visualize what kind of bowing motion would I like to have? And then you get that squared away, and then you ask yourself, okay, well, because you have a limitation there. You have a bow arm motion, and you have a path that the bow travels within, and that path has to meet the strings at a perpendicular angle. So then you move the violin according to that ideal bow path and the body, and then uh, find help, you know, uh, use the chin rest to help find that position. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, so start with... How are you going to play and then adjust the chin rest accordingly? Yes. That's, that's the idea. All right. Yeah. Um, do you have any, anything to add to this or anything else um, you'd like to share? Uh, one other thought. Um, so as far as ordinary chin rest go, mm -hmm. a lot of times I see, and I used to play with the center mounted chin rest, um, because the center mounted chin rests typically are higher by the very fact that they have to go over the tailpiece. Yeah. But the funny thing is, is that um, the more center mounted the chin rest, the more straight down the strings you're going to look, which moves the bow path closer to the right side of the body. Because it, look, if I, if I look straight down the strings, see how it moves that, that path that the bow travels closer to this side of the body, mm -hmm. which then means that I have to fold my arm on itself in order to fit it into this smaller space. Okay. So there's a relationship so if your players are even like average, average and above in terms of the length of their neck and the length of their bow arm, because mm -hmm. the two typically go hand in hand. If you have a taller neck, you typically have a longer bow arm, which means that when you put the instrument and you, you, you need a taller chin rest because you've yep. got a taller neck, yep. you'll get a center mounted chin rest and then it'll force your bow arm into this ah. chicken wing. Yeah. Position. Yeah. Which is notoriously people. unhealthy and unmusical. Okay. So I would say if you can manage it, if you have a taller neck, you need to find an increasingly side mounted position so that you mm -hmm. can relax, you can go into a neutral playing position in the bow arm. Okay. So that's like a limitation and it's a it's a it's sort of a I think therefore that this position is heavily influenced by the fact that the only chin rests that are that are like accommodate a taller neck are center mounted, and so it's actually the reverse of what's ideal. Yeah. If you have like a short arm person, will have to go increasingly center mounted. And I have yeah. friends that have such short arms that they even play with the chin rest on the on the other side of the tailpiece because okay. they need more length. Yeah. But um, if you've got a longer bow arm, your instrument is going to need to be. Uh, you're going to have to need a more center mounted position. And there's two ways to do that. You can either move the instrument like this, which mm -hmm. obviously moves the, the yep. bow path Gives farther away space. from the right side of the body. Yeah. But also, like you said, if you do that too much, then mm -hmm. everything ends up on yeah. the one side of the center line of the body, and that's yeah. sort of an un unbalanced position. Uh -huh. So the other option we have now with the cradle is that you can move the instrument this. You can keep your left hand where it's at and mm -hmm. move the instrument this way, and it allows you to come more in front. Um, and it'll, it'll also angle the string such that the bow path moves again away from the right side of the body. So yeah. um, I think that's a really, that's, I guess, a pet peeve of mine. It's, it's one of the things that I focus on a lot and think about a lot. Yeah. But figuring out where the angle of the strings so that the bow arm can be, you have a neutral elbow that's carried and a neutral wrist. Yeah. And that alone will, will solve tons of problems. Okay. But the solution for taller necked people is uh, typically not a center mounted chin rest, even though the center mounted chin rests tend to be taller. So, yeah, 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 exactly. And that's that's possible now with, uh, yeah, because there are a lot of, yeah, uh, uh, center mounted chin rests that are quite high. 
They even deliver yes. them in different heights, but then that's not really the solution to the problem. Okay, thanks for sharing so much um, valuable information, I think, for players. Yeah. Um, of course, we will link to the Cradle website uh, in the description below if people want to get this uh, chin rest and play uh, comfortably. Uh, so thanks so much for this interview and uh, I wish you all good luck with your business. Thank you. And I would just add too that um, you can, uh, at the bottom of our website, there's some mm -hmm. contact info and <clears throat> any of your listeners are welcome to send an email to us and uh, bounce some ideas off whatever great. is of concern and, and we'll do what we can to help out. That's great. Good to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Violin Lounge TV. I publish a new video every Wednesday and they're mostly violin lessons. If you don't want to miss them, then hit subscribe and turn on notifications. I hope to see you in the next lesson. Bye bye!